books are just these mass produced, really um, very inexpensive things now that, you know, people throw them away. Even when they're deaccessioned out of libraries, they just get tossed. My goal really was to take these things that are just sitting up on shelves as objects and just take all the reference, all the resource, all the content out of them and turn them into an object that sits on your walls or hangs off your ceiling. Well, hello and welcome back to the Quest for Zest. I'm Clark Underwood and I'm out here riding this scooter to the studio of Karen Hawkins. She's making sculptures and installations out of books, old books, and it is so cool to see what she can do with them. I can't wait to see it in person, but first, I gotta get there. Hey Karen, great How to meet you. you. I'm nice doing to meet great. you too. Welcome to my studio. Wow. This is a brilliant space. <laughs> Thank you. My I appreciate goodness. that. Goodness. Well, I've been spying your work online and these totems are much more grand right here in this room. Well, wait till you go stand next to them. Yeah, show them to me. Let's <laughs> okay. see. You've got it kind of set up as a gallery, a workspace. Right, exactly. I have set up as a gallery space to really kind of exhibit and show my pieces and have a place to store them. But a giant work table here, another work table over there, gives me kind of all the space I need to get down and dirty with all these books. <laughs> yeah, so tell me about the books. Like, I'm fascinated with the, the book as an object. I, I noticed you talk about that a lot. I do. Yeah. I really have been pushing the objectification of books. Books are just these mass produced, really um, very inexpensive things now that people throw them away, even when they're deaccessioned out of libraries. My goal really was to take these things that are just sitting up on shelves as objects and just take all the reference, all the resource, all the content out of them and turn them into an object that sits on your walls or hangs off your ceiling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a completely relatable like material mm -hmm. and I, everyone has like a familiarity, but then what you do with it makes you second guess like, well, oh my goodness, like, mm -hmm. That's, there's a whole lot going on there. Well, it really does have a sense of nostalgia, I think, for everyone. Um, we have been touching and holding and reading books since we were toddlers. And so one of the things that I really find interesting, in particular with my totems, is when people walk up to them and approach them, they walk up with their hands out. Mm. And it really is like, that's the first thing we do as toddlers, is to just reach out and grab the books and touch them. And so people immediately want to do that. And then they hope they say like, oh wait, I'm not supposed to do that. Am I supposed to do that? Can I touch it? And so, <laughs> yeah. And what's your take on that? Cause it is intriguing. I mean, the information kind of pulls you in and you want to know what is they've it? They've been touched thousands of times. I think you touch them. Have you developed like a crazy sense for paper? Like when, you're, when you're looking for, when you're looking for books, you're like, that's a breaker. Yeah, that's yeah. A <laughs> yeah. And some of those I use for other things, you know, but it just depends on what I'm, what I'm looking for. For some of my works, like not so much the totems, but for some of the other things that I work with, some of my new pieces, um, they're very specifically about nostalgia. Ephemera that was found that's over 100 years old. Um, for example, my love letters, Bonnie and Frank. Um, yeah, tell me about that. <laughs> so this piece, um, years ago in Round Top, I came across a metal box that was locked. It was a little metal lock box and I've left it here on the table so you could look at it. And it, I shook it and there was something soft in there. I bought it for $5, got it home, unlocked it, broke it open, and I discovered about 40 um, love letters between this young woman, Bonnie Monty, in um, Kings Mountain, North Carolina, wow. and a gentleman, Frank Summers, who lived in, I think it was Lakeland, Florida. And it's their love story. It's really sweet, and I held them for a very long time before deciding that I wanted it to really be some type of tapestry. You sort of wove their love story mm -hmm. together. Wow, that's beautiful. How did you find art? And then how did you decide like books is gonna be my practice? Well, I think it kind of found me. You know, I was in art school at UT and I have a little bit of an anxiety disorder. I get, I'm a fairly highly anxious person. And I was in a lecture and I was just like, 
coming out of my skin having to sit there through this lecture. For some reason, I was just really anxious that day. And I had a tiny little book. I just opened it and turned the page over and into this one singular fold, and I ran my finger down the page. And I went, oh, you know, and I thought, oh, that feels nice. That page is really nice under my finger. And I turned it and I put the next page down and creased it. And I just kept doing that same repetition of motion. And what I discovered is that it really calmed me. It was very meditative for me. And by the time I had kind of finished after 20 minutes of this, I looked down and I realized that each of those precise folds had begun to create this form that was really kind of coming out of the book. It was turning into like a yeah, half moon kind of Yeah, it was turning thing. into this thing that I was like, oh, now that's kind of interesting. What if I put two folds in that one page? Or what if I folded it three or four times? What kind of forms will you create? And I just, kept going. <laughs> and that curiosity has never ended. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'd, and a little obsession, a little OCD, yes, yeah. it helps. When people step into an exhibition or see a piece on display, what, what do you hope that it does for the viewer? That it will bring some type of nostalgia, some memory up for them, or that they'll walk through and smile and just feel like, like this is something that they really um, can relate to. So what's this piece? So this is a mandala. Okay. And it's uh, a piece that I did as a, a custom piece for a client. Um, it's still in my studio because he's remodeling his home. This one is made out of romance novels and it's cut books. So now I have taken, you know, little paperbacks um, and cut them first into uh, width that I need. Um, keeping the spine in place and then fold them into varying forms. I love that you get a different look at the book so you can see how the edges have started to patina mm -hmm. and then it gives you these gradients and the way you arrange them it gives it movement right. and it really the book comes to life in a way it was never meant to be. Yeah. And then what's what's going on here? Um, so this is two pieces. This is all book covers from various books that I have done in addition to some of my jelly rolls. Jelly rolls, so tell me jelly about rolls. a jelly roll. Okay, so jelly rolls, jelly rolls are fun. There's some behind you too. These are just individual pages that have been dyed with uh, an acrylic ink and then rolled uh, one page at a time around a dowel. Um, and really this came about, my grandmother was a quilter and she would cut out squares of fabric, stack them on top of each other, these bright colorful squares, stack them on top of each other, roll them and then tie them with another piece of fabric string or something. And I remember as a child looking up at a shelf that she had put a few of these rolls in and she called them jelly rolls. And the ends of them had these brightly colored, you know, swirls. Yeah. And so, um, this is kind of my um, referencing that, that memory of my childhood. This is you recreating your nostalgia <laughs> in your books. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell me about the totems. Was this the beginning of the book? Yes. The so book, the book work? this was kind of the beginning. And it started with a small little book form that I did in a lecture. And it grew into this bigger book form. To the person who is just now discovering like their visual obsession or their um, creative output, what, what kind of uh, wisdom would you pass back? I think I would say um, just dive in fully, fully dive in. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not the way to go or it's not the direction. You just go and do exactly what appeals most to you and let that drive you, let that guide you. You do have to touch this though. Like you really have to just hold that because that well, just- It's heavier than I expected. I know. It's as heavy as and a book. And it's sturdy. Is this a whole book? That is a book, a whole book. Wow. This is like a- That's probably a dictionary. Yeah, dictionary, mm -hmm. a Chinese dictionary. Mm -hmm. Might be a more efficient way to read. <laughs> Thanks so much for letting me come into your studio and poke around and ask all these questions because what, what you're doing is really cool and I really well, appreciate thank it. thank you. I love sharing this with people and I'm always happy to have people come and visit the studio. It's one of my actually favorite times is when people will call and say, hey, can we do a studio visit? So it's fun, I enjoy it. Well, thanks so much, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you.
Well, it has been an awesome day spent with Karen Hawkins in her studio, and it was so cool to see how she's taken old books, the object of the book, old information, and given it a new life, a new thing to be appreciated. Full of nostalgia, full of wonder, such a curious creation. I'm glad to have seen it, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. This has been The Quest for Zest.